guys! If you would like to support this channel, Heather Mater Art, like this patron, Julie, did, thank you so much, there is a link to the PayPal in my description box where small donations are welcome. The other way to support an artist is to buy art, <laughs> and you can do that here. This painting still is available. It's a 16 by 20 gallery wrapped, very beautiful and spectacular in person. Maybe you could imagine this piece in your home and you can contact me and we can talk about this beautiful painting. So here's the colors that we're gonna use today. I'm not gonna use every single one, but I do use most of these colors. These are hand mixed custom colors, um, all different brands. If you look at the painting I did before this, um, the triptych painting, I go through all of these colors, what they are, and um, how I made them. So that's a good way to find out that information. I also use this Urban Creator Torch on this painting, and there's a 40% off coupon code. This is a great torch, um, very substantial, and it works well. So if you're in the market for a new torch, there is a coupon code in my description box, and you can find it there. So today I do a cloud pour, and I only say it's a cloud pour because I use the cloudy mix that Melly D had originally created. And that's 50% Satin Enamel by Deco Art and 50% Artist Loft. And that's the white paint that you will see in this video. This is a flip and drag and no silicone was used in this painting. Here's another view of that little flip and drag. Kind of like seeing it like that pretty and the thing about this uh, painting this is a 12 by 12 canvas from Arteza they do black canvases now and um, I really like the quality of their premium canvases um, this is the cloud pour mix that I was talking about the 50 50 cloud pour mix there's no flow trial in that and some people do use Floetrol, I just don't. I use Artist Loft, white, satin enamel, and a little bit of water if necessary. It's not always necessary though. And my point in um, this cloud pour <clears throat> is to get some of the uh, colors to bleed through the white so I'm not necessarily looking for that pure white look um, I had to take a little lump out of there of some paint sometimes you have to just stop and do that um, I'm not looking for that pure white look but I am looking for that beautiful um, bubbly look and so to do that you need to use air i'm gonna break out my little airbrush now you guys can i know you're always asking me what i use for my airbrush and honestly i don't know i got it used and it doesn't have a label on it but it's just an airbrush with a compressor that um I can control the amount of air that's coming through there so so you see I just did another little flip and drag over that other area now this painting right now is not my favorite um, but there's parts of it that are really pretty like that mysterious blue that's right next to the red I love that part and I love the gold that's coming through the lacing of the red through that mysterious is really pretty. So if I break out my little airbrush here and I just start gently going through the white to create some of those beautiful little 
bubble cells that I was talking about. There's something really relaxing about watching air move through paint. I love it. the way that white looks to the other colors over the top of white it's so pretty now you could do this with a um, blow dryer you'll have a slightly different look and you could do this with a straw again it's a slightly different look there is something about the constant um, flow of air from an airbrush that gives it the particular look that this painting will have at the end and here I am just dumping white paint in the middle of my painting. <laughs> I know you guys love seeing that. But there wasn't quite enough contrast or interest in this painting for me. And I didn't want to cover up the red part, but actually it needed something. There's, it's just too monochromatic for me. And there's no focal point. You want your eye to go somewhere when you see a painting, so the composition is important. And for this painting, I just wasn't getting that uh, feeling, so. I'm trying to preserve that mysterious blue color, which I really love. Now, immediately I am not overly excited <laughs> about what I'm seeing because I'm getting a lot of mud. It's kind of pretty, but a little bit muddy too, so yeah. I'm trying to figure out if I could work with that. I sat with this painting for like 15 minutes <laughs> and of course I cut that part out but I really did just sit here and think what can I do to make that more interesting unfortunately the more blending you do, um, and then the more muddy it became. So now I'm pretty much not happy at all with that part of the painting. Um, I'm not sure. I didn't know what to do. I tried tilting a little bit, and I just was not happy with that at all. It just looks kind of gross. So I decide I need to really add some brightness. And you can see at the point where I just start recklessly abandoning, throwing paint on my canvas, you know that I'm about ready to just scrape it off. <laughs> that seems to be the magic point for me sometimes, where I just really let go of the outcome and decide that I'm just going to you know, let go of the painting. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. And sometimes that's when the magic occurs. <laughs> so I put those paints on and then I had a little tiny bit of that purple left. And then I just gave it one more go with the airbrush. This time you can see I was very careful. I only put the purple and blue over the white and then the white over the yellow, orange, and red color. 
so in doing that I didn't really mix the purple and blue in with those other colors and that separation is what makes this painting really cool and pretty now I really like it it's um, hard to see in this light but I'm gonna move it to the other light here in a second so you can really see look at that mysterious blue color isn't it pretty with the red and the transparency of those fluffy beautiful clouds I love that cloud mix it's really a magical mix it kind of reminds me of a sunset right there with the yellows and reds coming through this is an interesting little painting that deep gorgeous blue of the mysterious the purple I don't use purples very much and violets in my pores but this was fun to use up some extra colors that I had made up and I just was having a good time look at that little transparent <laughs> cell right there I love it and I love the contrast of that blue and red it's really pretty very sparkly and those lovely little cells they look like bubbles I love how wispy and ethereal that looks well thanks so much for coming with me on this little painting journey you guys and I can't wait to make more art videos just for you have a great day Bye, guys.